I stream from Windows and I'm not ashamed of it, okay? I'm not. The more I code, the more I find myself gravitating towards C. The newer languages with more f I have literally never said this phrase, but to be fair, I am currently using Zig, which obviously Zig, I, I maybe this is true, maybe I am, maybe, okay, am I actually accidentally gravitating towards Zig? I went from Rust to Go to Zig, and now it's just like slowly, is, is that slowly going towards C? Isn't C the OG Lang? No, C is not the OG Lang. That's exactly what's happening, okay. Features, way more features. Just don't enrapture me in the same way. There's so much going on, so many clever ways to implement the function that it turns into a blurry deluge of information. So that's why I'm not really interested in new languages. I like this terminology. Hey, he used such nice vocabulary. A deluge, a deluge of information. Enraptured, this is great. Are we watching programming anime now? Yeah. But why C specifically? Yeah, hit me with some C. I love C because of how elegantly it arises from the underlying technology. A computer is just a bunch of digital logic connected to memory elements. It's directly controlled using binary machine code. A high-level language facilitates software development by introducing layers of abstraction on top of these instructions. In doing so, a programmer's tools are created, and decisions need to be made as to what those tools are and how high up you want to go. C captures the beauty. Hold on, there was a little blip. They, you know, these things, this is like the easiest way to nerd How high something. up you want to go. Pa oh my, I am the world's greatest pauser. I have the world's greatest pause. Assembly is more or less a one-to-one -one translation of this machine code into a readable but still esoteric format. Blip mentioned, dude, Blip gets me every single time. Oh. C captures the beauty of the underlying mechanisms. For me, it's similar to admiring a well-made mechanical watch. Each component is a precision instrument, performing its role exactly as intended. Each component provided... Do you think it's kind of wild? That is a very nice watch, by the way. Do you think it's kind of wild that to make a watch like that, you have to be like a watch master? And you have to spend, like, watches are still very hard. Those old mechanical style watches are still, like, they're exceptionally difficult to do. And you have to spend decades learning watch building techniques to be able to bend, to be able to build something like that. Yeah, so many hours uh, on uh, on your stream. Call me a watch master. Yeah. Isn't it, dude, and exceptionally expensive? Yeah, it's watchcraft. Dude, watchcraft is real. Still less accurate than a quartz watch. Yeah, but it's still cooler. Okay. Mecha like you know, we went down the digital route, but there is something that's always uh, kind of exciting about this idea of the of the analog slash mechanical route, and so this this watches are the only ones that kind of survived the digital re revolution in some sense, and there's the, just this the mechanical precision just keeps getting greater and greater. It's it, I don't know, it's just something very interesting about watches. Writing the motive force for the next module. That said, when you're using a watch, and when you're using a high-level language, you don't want the tedium of controlling all these parts by hand. That's why we use for loops, if-else branching functions. These abstract away tedious manipulations. Yet, it's easy to go too far in the other direction and abstract away every aspect of the underlying system, turning it into a black box. And a lot of modern programming feels a bit like stacking black boxes onto black boxes onto black boxes. I, my only counter to this really is that I feel like even if you're programming in C these days with just how much, how much is happening underneath the hood at the CPU level, you're still so many black boxes above something. You know, like it's what actually happens, what actually gets like, I mean, there's just so much more that's going on that, you know, it's. There's just so much abstraction. Like, does it? How much does it actually matter? Because the real, the, the the real thing is, is that you have to always answer the question: to to what level does the abstraction give me the power to solve the problem in the best way? There's also compiler magic. Crazy amounts of compiler magic. There's crazy amounts of compiler magic, right? There's an elegance on how small uh, as a language C is and, and powerful, though. Yeah, I mean, assembly is even smaller. I mean, you can go, you can go really small, you know. You can, go, you can go really, really, really small, and it, it builds. You know, it, it builds a lot of stuff. All you need is NAND. I mean, really, all you need is a bunch of NAND gates, and you got yourself. You got yourself something pretty awesome. Um, 
the, the, the only reason why I don't like this argument of you get more control is that it's the same reason why I don't use Arch. Because I found the level of abstraction that I'm willing to deal with. Because every level you peel away, you hopefully are giving yourself more control, but it always comes at a cost of time. Let's just be real. Do you have any idea like where or how Rust is allocating stuff? You probably don't. Most people just don't really know. They know they have a, a general feel for when it's something is uh, like heap allocated versus stack allocated. Whereas with something like Zig, you get more control. But it's also kind of, you know, it can be more painful. The more control you have, the more pain you have. Uh, I just watched your video on how what your distro says about you. Yeah, I named that. <laughs> what your distro says about you. I, I named the video, if you use this distro, you're, a, you're probably a furry. Or you're a furry if you use this distro. And so it's like, that's the thing is I don't want to trade off time too often. For me, time is the most valuable thing. And so I, I, want to, I, I, I don't want to tr make that trade unless if it makes sense. It did get you to click. Nice. The tools of C are simple, yet they are extremely powerful. For example, pointers, a very simple concept, yet they are difficult to use skillfully. That's one nice part about languages like Zig. You kind of, pointers are easy to use, or they're much easier to use. There's a whole class of problems that just don't exist anymore with, uh, with Zig, and I think that that's really nice. right? If you have a pointer that could be null, you just toss a little question mark in front of it. And then all of a sudden, it just makes life a lot easier, right? I don't, for those that haven't seen this, uh, if you had something that could be null, like if I had a function, right? I had a function, uh, you know, function foo that takes in, let's just say a clock that is a pointer to a real time item. Uh, is it like this? I always forget how this thing is done. I could say this. And now clock, I can't just access stuff. I first have to denull it. So I can go clock you know, and, and do a little capture group. There we go. So now I actually have the clock. Or I can do something like, you know, like return clock dot, you know, unnull it and then get the last time, right? You can kind of do this whole interesting thing. And I actually really like this. I really like that they have this in Zig and they support it at a very, very small, uh, they, they just support it at a language level. And I know Rust has the same thing and Go does not have this. But I actually really like that you can do this. So you can just have pointers, and you can say, hey, guess what? This pointer always exists. That's it. It just always exists. Therefore, you don't ever have to worry about any of those operations, right? You don't have to worry about that because that's no longer a thing. And so it's like it, it has like it has optionals built in, but they're just like little optionals. You know, they're just like optional enough. Hey, you know what you're doing? You want a reference? Ah, be my guest. Pointer it to the universe. Oh, you don't know what you're doing and it could be null. Hey, Toss a little question mark. It's like, to me, that's like a great abstraction, right? I'm not losing too much time, but I am gaining more control. I, I, I do find that Zig has a really good, like, time control trade-off in that, in, that, in that regard, specifically. When mastered, they grant tremendous power. A program that uses pointers well is shockingly elegant and evokes the pleasure of mastery, a satisfaction that comes from applying a difficult skill well, very nice and concise definition. I actually really like that definition. That's perfect. Okay, let me throw this out there. I actually agree with what he says for him. And the reason being is that tomorrow he's going to get up and want to program more C. And that's super important. Because if you get up and you take the same approach and you're like, I'm going to be a master, and then you find yourself hating it, you're not going to program more. And that isn't good. And so I don't care about the person that programs JavaScript. I'm happy that they're excited about doing it. What I generally dislike is when people haven't tried something else and they say they don't like it, right? It's like if for anyone that's ever raised kids, anytime you show them a new food, they're like, oh, I don't like that. And you're like, you've literally never tried this before in your lifetime. What do you mean you don't like it? You don't, you don't, you like, you don't know. Go and try it. And then if you don't like it, don't, you know, no need to eat the quiche again, right? It's similar to seeing an artist create an image from a blank sheet of paper and a pencil. The lines flow together to create shapes, figures, scenery. A world is created with nothing but basic tools and the artist's skill. You can set yourself up to draw and pull out all the pencils, stencils, protractors, rulers, electronics, and whatnot. And they have their place. But isn't there a certain beauty 
to sitting down with the basics, just the basics, and capturing something pulled from your imagination with just dots and lines, there's an elegance in the pencil of an artist that knows what they're doing, in the watchmaker who connects basic components together to create a singular whole. I find that same element in the C language. It doesn't have C++'s filters or ranges, it doesn't have Rust's borrow checkers or iterators, it's not a mathematically rigorous language like Haskell. Haskell mentioned. I knew it. I knew it. I could tell right away that it was going to get to Haskell because there was a white paper. And once there's a white paper, I mean, the chances of Haskell being mentioned are already going upwards. Already going upwards. It gives you a few simple tools and the power to create anything. Real talk. I loved that video. I did. I loved that video. I did. Even though, I, you know, I think that a lot of people, when they probably saw that video, they disliked it. They were upset about it. Uh, they think, you know, the opinion kind of sucked, all that kind of stuff. I actually really genuinely liked that. I liked the idea of, of, of driving towards what makes, just like what makes you excited. I just, I'm so, I'm so, I, I just get so just like pumped up about those things. And I, I liked his arguments, right? It's sometimes there, the appreciation of mastery is something that I don't think we take a lot in. Like right now on Twitter, if you were to go and say, what's the most important skill of a software engineer? I'd say universally, someone's going to say something along those lines of, of soft skills. And I, I like that. I like the inversion to it, which is mastery is like a really great thing to strive for. I like it. You can do both, but I, I just like, I, I like that. Genuine answer. Debugging is probably the most important skill you can have. Fair. I like that. I can, I can agree that debugging is generally probably the most important one. It's not a bad opinion. I mean, I, I think that largely it's an impractical opinion. But does everything have to be practical? You know, I've been, like I said, I've been, on, I've been on my G.K. Chesterton kick lately, and he talks a lot about the man of efficiency. The men, the men of efficiency produce small men. It's kind of like his big argument. Like, not everything needs to be perfectly practical. Sometimes it's good, like, it's okay to be impractical. You don't, it doesn't have to be the most efficient. Like, you can actually just do something. It's not even minimal. It's not even minimal. It's that drive, right? Because some people have a drive that's far out, right? Like, I want to be a master. Some people have drives that are really, really, really close and tiny. Like, I just want to complete... I just want to get hired. And those are two very different drives. And they can produce similar outcomes. But I think longevity-wise, one produces a much better outcome than the short one. And I also think the long drive will also make this drive the, hey, I just want to get a job. I think you'll excel and go a lot further if you have a really good far north star as opposed to a really close north star. Anyways, just some thoughts. There you go. That's what happens. The name is the primogen.